Hello, horror fans, and welcome back to Dead by Daylight. In this episode, as you can see at the top here, we are in the public test build. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at the archives. We're going to see what it's about, we're going to see what the rift is about, and try to answer some of the questions that I haven't seen answered by other people when they've been exploring it. So, tutorial, the archives, tomes. New tomes are regularly added to the archives. Each tome is released with one level of challenges, and further levels can be accessible, become accessible over time. Once a new level is available, it can be accessed by reaching the epilogue of the previous level. You can accept one challenge at a time. Most challenges can be completed in multiple trials and will reward blood points. Master challenges must be completed in one trial, but they offer greater rewards and occasionally unlock entries in the tome's collection. The collection is a window into the stories of the Dead by Daylight characters, containing memories, logs, and animated sequences. If there is an open rift, then the challenges in the current tome will also, will also award rift fragments. These fragments unlock tiers of rewards in the rift. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and go back here, and here we have the tome. So, if we complete the level, then we will get the inner eye, a mysterious frequency awakens the inner eye of those who seek the truth, and this is either a killer or survivor charm that can be used on any character. We'll get into the charms here in a little bit. We also will get ten additional rift fragments, which are used to purchase things in the rift. We can see that level two, level three, and so on are coming soon. So. We can either go sort of a survivor route here, or we can go a killer route here. And the rift that is currently open will close in 52 days according to this. So, let's take a look at some of this stuff here. So, first off, we have, for the first killer one, which is the direction I'll probably go in, hook eight survivors. So that's pretty straightforward, you could even do that within one trial pretty easy. And if we do that, then we will get three of the Rift Fragments, as well as 1,500 additional blood points. Damage six generators is the next one, and we get three Fragments and 1,500 blood points, or 15,000 blood points again. Now we get to one of these Master Challenges, so we have to damage the same generator two times in a game. But that will award us five of the Rift Fragments and 25,000 blood points. Damage a generator or destroy a dropped pallet four times using the per brutal strength. So, this could also be done fairly easily, I would say, and would also give us the 5 and the 25,000. Then we have one that is specific to the trapper. Catch a survivor in, two, in a bear trap two times as the trapper. So, this will be for 5 and 25,000 as well. For the survivor, we have things like repair two generators, unhook two survivors, completely heal four health states of any survivor, search two chests using the perk Plunderer's Instinct. Back to the killer, we have kill all survivors in a trial one time, which is a bit of a challenging one, but that's probably why it's over here toward the very end. For the survivor at the very end here, we would have completely heal two health states of any survivor while using the perk Empathy. And then we would get the epilogue, which I assume would then give us the rewards and probably tell us a bit of the story. I'm not exactly sure, but I think that's how it would work. So, sacrifice one survivor to the entity during the endgame collapse. Interesting. So we have to start the endgame collapse, then sacrifice somebody. Which the nice thing is, if we down the last survivor, for example, we could easily have him down, close the trap door, and then hang him in order to get this award to unlock. Or have somebody on the hook close the trap door, the end game collapse would start, and then in theory they would be sacrificed. So that would work fine. So for this, you just have to earn 50,000 blood points, and then they give you additional blood points. So uh, that's pretty straightforward and simple. Disturb 25 crows. You can do that as a killer or survivor, so I guess, once again, that's not too difficult. Pretty easy to get through. So once again, each of these gives these rift fragments as well as the blood points. 
with the rift fragments, we go over to the rift. The archives, the rift. Rifts contain rewards for both killers and survivors. Collect rift fragments to increase your tier in the rift and unlock more rewards. When a rift is open, rift fragments can be collected by earning XP and completing challenges in the current tome. The rift is split into two tracks, a free track and a premium track, so this is where they're bringing in the battle pass idea to Dead by Daylight. Rewards on the free track are available to all players, while those on the premium track are only available to players who unlock the rift pass. The rift pass can be unlocked by spending oryx cells. If you have the rift pass, you can also use oryx cells to immediately unlock more tiers on the rift. When the rift closes, your progress and pass are reset, and the next rift will start at tier 1. Okay, and that becomes a little bit more explanatory when we actually take a look at it here. So here we have the free pass where we have a few things that are basically charms that can either hang on the killer's uh, hooks or on the belts of survivors. So we have charms here, and then we have some additional things down here. We'll get into here in a moment. But if we look along the free pass, we have one piece of clothing at rank 14 here, and a head here at rank 23. We have pants here at level 28, a hand over here at level 33. This is a charm, so that doesn't do anything for us. Well, it does something, but it doesn't give a cosmetic for our characters. Here at level 55, we have another weapon, this one for the uh, trapper. Level 63, we get a Claudette head. And then that's it. So you get a very few cosmetics on the free pass, but you do get some cosmetics. Where on the other hand, if we look at the paid pass here, we have a cosmetic there, we have a cosmetic here, we have another cosmetic here, weapon here, head here, and as far as I understand it, you also get everything that's on the free side. That's something I do want to check out, though. So, with this being the PTB, Dead by Daylight has graciously given us extra Oryx cells so we can play around with this. So, with those free Oryx cells, let's go ahead and unlock this pass. So the pass is going to cost a thousand Oryx cells, so it's going to be basically ten dollars per Rift Pass. Which, considering the Rift lasts for, I think, roughly around six weeks, I'd say that's not too bad. Especially considering the number of cosmetics you can get. If you get one set of cosmetics that you like, you would have paid that amount just for those cosmetics for that one set. Here you're getting a set of cosmetics you like plus a whole bunch of other stuff, as long as you do what you're supposed to. So, let's go ahead and spend their money for right now. I definitely have no problem with that. So we'll unlock the pass. Yes, we'll spend those thousand points. And now everything down here becomes available. So we see these here on Tier 1. And it looks like we've already been given Tier 1, but I'm not exactly sure on that. We'll have to check that here in a few moments. The other thing about the premium tier is you have all of these Oryx cells as something you can unlock in the tier, which is significant. Now, I have said in many videos I am not good at math, so I'm not going to even attempt to do the math right here. But I've heard on another person's video for this that the Oryx cells actually add up to a thousand Oryx cells. So in theory, if I were to complete this tier all the way up to, where's the last one, level 68, the premium pass would actually pay for itself, and then everything I got was just freebies. So with that being considered, it actually makes a lot of sense to go this route. If this is going to be the norm where you're able to get basically your money back by doing everything you're supposed to in the premium version, especially for people who play the game a lot, then really you're just getting free stuff for playing the game, which is a heck of an incentive. So that's definitely a good thing. So first things first, I want to check these things out. We can see them here. We get this little charm, 
as I said, this is something they'll be able to hang from the belt of a survivor. Um, here we have a killer one, which is really very disturbing looking. Sadistic puppet. A shadow creeping up the wall. An eerie presence lurking. If you know what the sadistic plaything is, up to next. Yeah, this looks like something out of the Hellraiser series almost, realistically, so it's pretty disturbing, I will agree. We have a pustule flower, which if you played the Hallowed Blight last year, you know what this is. And this one seems to work for either killer or survivor, so you can put it on either case. Now, I want to see if I already have tier 1, because it says my current tier is this. I don't know if that means I already have it, or I still have to do something to earn it. So let's go over to killer, customize, and under customize we can see the Hallowed Blight skin I got for my uh, Wraith last year. But then we now have these three slots here for charms. And it does look like the charms that I got as tier 1 have been added to my collection here. And as you can see, we can go ahead and place the charms on hooks on the, uh, on the, our hook here. So then I could put this one here and it would be up over here. And if I wanted, I could go ahead and put this one here and then there will be those two on the same side there. You have an option to have three different charms on your hook. And if I switch over to Survivor, we can see for Survivor we have the same thing here where we have the ability for charms. And here instead, we have the different things will be on the belt of the Survivor. So we have our little pustule pedal, and then we have our Claudette, our Claudette figurine. So, we got Tier 1 just by unlocking the Rift Pass. That's sort of interesting. This is not available right now. I'm guessing this is going to be where, if you do things like possibly the Master Challenges, they had said that there would be visuals or memories and stuff. I'm guessing this is where that's going to be. And I'm not sure if it's even available on the PTB. But back to the Rift here for a second. So, they gave us 2,000 points, and then I had, or 2,000 Oryx Hills, and then I had some extra ones that I just still had laying around in my account. So because we're on the premium version, we are allowed to unlock tiers. And we can pay 100 Oryx cells to unlock a tier. Now, as I had sort of asked before, I was curious if this tier would give me not only the Oryx cells, but also this introduction to botany charm. So let's go ahead and see. We're going to spend 100 points here on 100 Oryx cells. And it looks like both of them have become available. I did get the points back into my account here, so those Oryx cells have been paid out to me, so that's a good thing. And when we look at the Survivor Charm abilities, we do see the one that was on the free track. So now I can have three different charms on my Fang Min here if I wanted to. So with the money that I have as far as the Oryx cells here, since it's the PTB and I'm not actually spending this amount of money, let's go ahead and level up the 14 additional levels that I know I can unlock. Actually, before I do that, there is one other thing I wanted to check here. So on the tome, I am pursuing level... Okay, so I'm only pursuing level 1 as far as completion over here, so that's that. But on current tier of level 2, it looks like that it is also still just 10 rift fragments. Let's see if that continues. So when I go up the 14 levels that I can... Will it still only be 10 Rift Fragments to go up a level, or is it going to be more? That also gave us some more Oryx Cells, so we can actually take it up a little bit higher. 
But even at current tier of 16, it still looks like you only need 10 rift uh, fragments per level. So that's good to know, because that means then that for the entire rift of 70, you will only need 700 rift fragments. And when you're getting five of them for each master challenge and three of them for every one of the basic challenges, that number is going to go through fairly quickly. It's not going to take that long to get that number. For right now, I'm going to spend the additional stuff, the additional auric cells that I've got in order to go up the two levels and have them unlock. So, doesn't give me enough auric cells to go up to the next level, but this is a decent amount here. So let's take a look at some of the things that we've unlocked. So, for the nurse... We have the malignant growth, and we have the dripping uniform. And I say this is a hollow blight outfit because of the fact if we turn her around, she has the injector in the back of her here. As I said, very interesting because I did not see her as one of the killers that people were expecting this year to get a Halloween costume. Um, it really is quite grotesque. It looks like she's got like little spider arms or something coming out of the bottom of her dress, as well as on her arms. And then she has these glowing pustules coming out of her face and from parts of her body, like her shoulder. Now, I did not get enough to unlock her weapons, so we don't get to see that. So here is the nurse's Halloween weapon, which is looking nice and disturbing. I like the glow to it. Looks like it's got several of those serum syringes in the actual blade itself. So that's very cool. Now, this particular item, I think, is of real benefit to killers, especially to get for their charm. So the final possibility here is this nectar vial, which, once again, if you remember from the Hollowed Blight, is basically the serum vial. And it as I have seen in gameplay with people who have put this out, it does have that glow that the actual cosmetics do, that orange's glow at this part here. And as I said, I think this could be beneficial for killers because some survivors use that perk uh, that came with Kate Denson where the nearest hook isn't highlighted in red for the killer. With this being hung on the hook, that won't really matter. If you catch sight of your hook at all, you'll see that glow going on, and so you'll know that you have a hook there. So this could eliminate one of the perks that survivors might even bring into a match. So while you do have to get to level 70 for it, I'd say it really could be a useful thing to have and really worth it. Now, I can't be sure that this is the actual layout of the perks they will have, if these will change around, anything of that nature. But... I think that this has some real possibilities, and definitely I will be planning on getting this premium pass myself when it comes out in the actual game, and trying my best to get to level 70 to get this before it goes off of the market. As far as the PTB goes and trying out things in the tome, I think I'm going to pass on this particular PTB, at least in the next coming day or two. I'm a bit under the weather, and... Right now, I just don't feel like trying to grind through this tome, especially because I really don't want to find out any of the secrets for the characters until this becomes part of the actual game. I really want to be surprised when I learn the things for the first time in the actual game and such. So, while the setup is cool, while I really appreciate the fact that they have it out here for people to test, I think I'm going to pass on it until it becomes part of the game and then enjoy it when I can fully try it out. So with that being said, I think I'm going to go ahead and end this video. If you've liked the video, please go ahead and click that like button. And if you haven't already, go ahead and click the subscribe button as well as the bell icon so that you'll be made aware when I produce new Dead by Daylight videos or videos in other categories. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you all in the fog.